Hey guys, Too Bad here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Midrange Paladin today as part of my Adapting to the Ladder series. Uh, this series itself, obviously, if you've read it before, aims to help you when playing these very popular and consistent decks, alter them based on what you're seeing in the meta so that not only will you kind of make the deck your own, but you'll also see win rates increase as the meta changes because what people tend to do is they see a pro play a deck uh, from weeks ago and They'll start playing it thinking that it's good, but in reality the meta has shifted a certain way, more towards aggression, more towards uh, control, at other things obviously because they're different deck archetypes, and people don't really know what to do. They're like, oh this deck is failing, it must be bad, right? No. The deck is failing because you don't know how to alter the deck when the meta is changing, which is a very, very important skill when it comes to laddering. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Paladin, I tried to play control. Uh, Back in vanilla, I wasn't very good, uh, which I think was part of the reason I wasn't finding success with it, but it's also incredibly slow and boring. And while I don't like face decks, I do think it's a little too slow for my liking. Like, I think it was one of the slowest decks around at the time. Um, and so when GVG came out, it presented cards like Monster for Battle, Coghammer, Shield Minibot that really made Paladin, at least in the early game, way better, which meant an aggressive slash mid-range deck can kind of be formed. But the beauty of this deck is not only is it a mid-range deck, which is are usually the most consistent, but it has the ability to turn really aggressive, which means you're making aggressive plays, you're playing early knife jugglers, attempting to get value, playing a little bit more greedy. Um, it, you can stay mid-range, or you can take think games slow if you're playing against a control deck like Warrior, if you're playing against, um, for some god-forsaken reason, a control paladin, if you're playing against a warlock. Uh, tons of different control decks. Um, you have the ability to completely change how the deck plays based on what you need. Now, for the most part, you're going to be playing this deck as a mid-range, uh, and you, you want to be playing this deck kind of aggressively, um, like in a Warlock, Handlock matchup, obviously not Zoo, um, you're going to be, in the early games, if you don't have like incredibly efficient plays, if you don't have like Shield of Mini bots to play, um, you're not going to be wanting to... I mean, it's it's kind of it's hard to explain. You're not going to be because it, each situation varies so much based on what opponent is playing, what you're playing. But you're not going to be wanting to hero power up constantly. Like you're still going to want to be wanting to be aggressive and trying to kill the enemy before they can build up their threats because that's the nature of control decks. They want to take their time and be, get these huge cards and just overwhelm you. Um. So that being said, uh, you're not looking to go into fatigue against a handlock. You're looking to still be aggressive but you can be slower aggressive you can make trades when you see them appear efficiently and things of the like therefore it's kind of it turns more into a zoo but still because of the paladins cards and whatnot it can get very very slow or like i said it can get really really fast it all depends on what's going on um looking at actually altering the deck cards to switch uh as always with almost any uh, control of slash mid-range deck. Uh, if you're having trouble with the early game, zombie chows are great. You can drop a uh, late game card, maybe boom, because boom doesn't do anything on the turn it's played. Um, for a zombie chow, uh, you can drop... Uh, I mean, there are a lot of open cards in, in this paladin deck. Not as much as things like Ramp Druid, but you have uh, like Coghammer, Argus. These Those two cards are very... Uh, in this deck list, are totally changeable with whatever you want. Um, one quartermaster is always up for grabs. Um, the Lothib spot can sometimes be switched with Harrison Jones. I know some people don't like running a Lothib. I think Lothib is too invaluable to run because it has a turn of denial, and you don't really. Peop it forces the opponent to play inefficiently if they want to clear your board, uh, and I think that's incredibly valuable in this deck. But you know, it's all based on what you're seeing and what you uh, want to alter your deck for. Uh, those are really among the only cards you want to really consider, like on extremes, you can drop uh, Zombie Chow against, if you're seeing all control, you can drop um, Big Game Hunter, I, which I really do not recommend because Big Game Hunter is so good right now. It'll land in like 95% of the decks being played right now. But I if you're playing all face hunter, you can drop Big Game Hunter. Uh, but understand that that's probably never going to happen. Uh, now, like a healthily altered deck, is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I've been experimenting with this because of the popularity of this Chinese priest that runs um, the Death Lord. It runs the Gilbin Stalker and whatnot. Uh, this deck it aims to 
keep my win rate with against other decks, but also improve my win rate against this priest because priest is naturally a very hard matchup for this deck. I would say the biggest three weaknesses to uh, this list in specific. Um, I know there are alterations in this deck that will make it better against certain matchups, but this deck in specific loses really hard to oil rogue. But that's just paladin in general. Um, this deck loses really hard to priest, obviously the control variety. Uh, I haven't played against some mech priest, so I couldn't tell you that matchup. Although even that mech priest tends to be a little more controlling. And it also loses pretty hard to face hunter. Now, uh, when I say loses pretty hard, I don't mean it. Uh, you're going to be losing games all the time with it. I mean, unless you really know this deck and you know how, and you can read how players are playing, you're not going to be winning against face hunters a lot. You really have to know the insides and outs if you want to defeat these face aggro decks with as minimal healing as you have. Things like uh, Lay on Hands, while they are 8 HP, you're also, if you're going to play it on turn 8, you are doing nothing else the rest of the turn, which oftentimes will be too slow, which means you're going to be relying on your pool of 30 and your, um, maybe true silver charges here and there to keep you alive and end the game. <laughs> um, now this deck, obviously, like I was saying, aims to be one of the uh, matchups that I've been seeing a lot. For some reason, Oil Rogue it just isn't seeing play, which is weird because it's really good, uh, especially against this deck. So I'm not going to be altering my deck too much against that. I was, however, like I said, seeing a lot of Chinese Priest playing, being played and uh, Standard Control Priest, which does give this deck a hard time. And so I decided to opt out specific cards. I dropped a Quartermaster for a Stampeding Kodo. I dropped a uh, cog hammer for mind control tech, and I dropped. What did I drop for inequality? Um, I'll see how I need to know. Uh, Argus, that's right. Did it? Was it Argus? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I dropped Argus for inequality. So this comes down to the like card breakdowns individually. But equality is just better against priest because they usually have high HP minions, and even if you don't have a follow-up to equality, it denies uh, card draw from things like Northshire because now the minions can't get healed because they're all at 1 HP, and you if anything lower than 1 HP is 0, which means they're dead. Um, and it allows for equality consecrate combos, which tend to be pretty good against priests because they don't have a ton of minions that can survive death. Like, they don't have, they don't run harvest golems or st stickier minions. They do sometimes run piloted shredders. They Think. I've seen priests with pilot shredders before, but that's pretty weird. It doesn't happen a lot. Um, which is that card is amazing. Um, priests tend to go from having a small board to a large board pretty quickly, uh, so that means mind control tech in the mid to later stages of the game will usually have a chance to land. And priest cards are usually pretty value to get, so that means mind control tech is going to be something that you you're most often than not either going to get a, a minion that was stolen from you t back, or you're going to get a pretty value card that they have. Uh, Kodo isn't here for multiple reasons. Kodo has a lot of synergy in Paladin, and that's because of cards like Humility. Uh, old Control Paladin, I believe, used to run 2 Humility to 2 Kodo because it can just kill anything. It was sort of uh, in the same vein as the card Black Knight, where you can kill anything. Black Knight kills anything with Taunt, which is a little more specific. But uh, you also get a decent sized body behind it. In this case, you get a 3-5. Um, it was effectively the same combo. It just cost 2 cards, and instead of getting a 4-5, you get a 3-5. But in this deck, I don't run a quality, a Humility because it's way too slow of a card. And instead, I decided to run Elder Peacekeeper because it effectively does the same thing. And Elder Peacekeeper is so good. It's one of the I, one of the best cards in the game. Uh, and paired with Kodo, you can kill literally any card. So it's pretty good to say the least. And against Priests, they're running Death Lords. They're running Northshire Clerics. These are all cards that can easily die to Kodo. Even Gilpin Stalker, although usually Gilpin Stalker you won't be seeing played around the time you can play Stampeding Kodo. But if for some situation it is, you just killed a free Gilvan Stalker that was in stealth. Uh, you do sacrifice a Quartermaster, and I know there's a lot of contention between people who really like Quartermaster and some people who really hate Quartermaster, because there are times where you can just have two Quartermasters in your hand and you don't have board control because you have two Quartermasters in your hand, and you just can't get value out of the Quartermaster. And uh, while something like a turn 7 uh, hero power play Quartermaster is alright, it's not something you're really looking for that's going to establish a lot of board. And Quartermaster in specific is really, really bad against Priest because that means Priest can steal your 2-5 uh, with Cabal Shadow Priest, which is, isn't is the end of the world because at the end of the day it's a 2-5, but they still sell 7 stats worth of a card for nothing. And that, that sometimes can, can be a little bit of a blow. 
Also, priests are running a lot of light bombs recently. I played against Kibler, who was playing a little bit of a weird deck, but uh, his deck ran double Holy Nova, double light bomb. And that, it just destroyed me. Now, naturally, this deck isn't specifically targeted at that little uh, funkier deck, but cards like light bomb make quartermaster combo way, way worse. It doesn't, however, affect cards like Sludge Belcher, Stampeding Kodo, etc., because they have less, they're more uh, tilted to the right, and as far as HP goes. So, I mean, that's really like the gist of altering a deck, is you don't want to sacrifice things that make the deck good to increase your win rate against a specific deck, because more often than not, you're not going to be seeing one deck played on the ladder. This alteration of the deck is going to keep effectively the same win rate against all the other decks um, with little discrepancies here and there but for the most part you're keeping the same win rate while strengthening your deck against the priest deck you're going to be losing your win rate against decks that don't matter as much things like uh, mid-range hunter you're going to be losing more too but there's no mid-range hunters on the ladder right now so out of the five game like out of ten games six of those are priest you just Want, increase the win rate of those six games against priests, and one of them is mid range runner, so maybe you lose the mid range runner game. But at the end of the day, you won against those six priests because you made these alterations, and you lost to the hunter because you made these alterations. And I mean, that's a trade that you want to make. You want to make the six for one trade anytime. So that's just really what comes down to the ladder. Uh, for the most part, like something like this is a healthy alteration to the deck. This is stuff that you're you're shooting for when you're altering your decks. Um, that's really all it comes down to. Uh, there aren't any specifics that uh, you really... Like cards that you never want to get rid of, which will be specified in the article, obviously. Uh, equality, Knife Juggler, Shield of Minibot, the OP cards, Muster. Um, you can make a case for Knife Juggler. Uh, I think Black Knight is way too good to, dis er, to not bring right now with the Sludge Belchers and uh, Druids in general. It really increases your Druid matchup. But, you know, it's it comes down to what your preference is, what your playstyle is, and what you're looking for. So really, that's about it. Uh, good luck on the ladder, and I hope this deck will help you guys as much as it helped me. I'll see you guys next time.